Hello everybody, you'll get two videos from me today. So this is the day seven video. Thank you for all of the well wishes for my mother. She had some complications with her hip, so she's back in the hospital. But I will just say this, guys, this is why we do this. Learn this now, because aging isn't fun. You take care of your joints, you take care of your body, and it, take care, it takes care of you, because it all catches up exponentially as you get older. Um, once you hit about your mid 50s, the aging process is exponential. If you want to listen to Judith Campisi talk about cellular senescence and aging, you start to realize that um, you know the half-life of your you know your prime is uh, getting shorter and shorter. There's a big difference between a 65-year-old and a 55-year-old, and there's an even bigger difference, a much bigger difference between a 75-year-old and a 65-year-old. If you don't want all that stuff to catch up to you, start practicing the things we're talking about. You move, you eat right, you stay within a reasonable body weight, and then you don't have to get knee replacement, hip replacements, and whatnot. All right, that's enough of that. So, questions and answers. There's a whole bunch of questions this week, but there was an observation, and that's going to lead me you know, into my next topic and then tip. So, somebody asked... Um, that they notice that after they do a, an intermittent fast, that their blood their blood glucose goes up normally when they eat. So this is a person who already has a resting blood glucose of about 110 to 115 in first thing in the morning. So we're already dealing with um, possible type 2 diabetes, cer certainly trending that way, and insulin resistance. So... When that person fasts, and, and just to be clear, I've said this many times, fasting isn't for everyone. Fasting isn't for everyone. You can go back and listen to my YouTube channels about why I'm not a huge fan of a person like this fasting, um, but nevertheless, when they eat, their blood glucose goes higher, and then he notices a crash. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, based on what we're seeing with these blood glucose monitors because he wasn't manually checking his blood glucose. But the point I'm gonna make is going to remain the same. So based on what he said he ate, um, the fact that this is happening is, is kind of mysterious to me based on what he ate. I asked him, did you, did you drink alcohol? Are you, on, are you on medications? You know, Had this been a very high sugar meal, it would have been more, it would have made more sense that his blood glucose did what he did. But just to be clear, when there's already a problem with insulin signaling, when there's already a lot of blood glucose in the bloodstream, you're, you're, you're creating a long-term problem in the body where the body is thinking that you just had a big meal all the time. So this increases blood pressure. This, this increases everything in the body. So th think about it. If, if my blood glucose is 60, uh, excuse me, 70, 80, 90, somewhere around there, and I eat, and it goes up to 115, 120, 130, my body knows I ate, it releases uh, insulin accordingly, because there's a meal there. So my blood pressure will raise a, a little bit. All of the processes of digesting will start to you know turn on. But when it's chronically elevated, your body's going, okay, wow, there's a meal here. And blood pressure raises, and it, and it raises, you know, not, not just because, not simply because there's blood glucose there, but because over time, sugar in your bloodstream is sticky. It's thick. Okay? That's what raises blood pressure. It's, it's, the, it's the sticky thickness that eventually goes, goes into your uh, arterial walls and makes it harder and harder and harder for blood to move through because because of the stickiness they get kind of clumped together and eventually that leads to heart disease and problems and, and in the context of uh, um, damaged arterial walls and you know very high LDL this is this is why the cluster of dysfunctions for heart disease matter right it's not just it's not simply well my LDL is high if your LDL is high, your blood glucose is high, I guarantee your blood pressure is going to be trending higher than it should be. Um, but the point is, is that this is like when it's longitudinally, 
like this, this, this elevated blood glucose, it's a real problem. It's what raises blood pressure, what creates problem. If you acutely spike it, so you drink soda, now all of a sudden you release all this insulin, now it's like an over response. Then you'll see the blood glucose come down very quickly. So this leads me to what I was talking about yesterday in terms of having some fat. This is not a magic fix. Please remember the underlying problem is overeating. So if, you have a, if you're following all of my suggestions with protein, eat some fiber, try to have some resistant starches in terms of your fiber, have some fat with your meal. If you're still overeating, you will still, this still leads to insulin resistance because you're gaining weight. It's just much harder to overeat these foods and it will blunt the over response of insulin. It will blunt that blood glucose spike. But if for example, you had a whole bunch of carbohydrates and you're like, Tom said to add, you know, a whole bunch of fat and you overeat that. What you're really doing is, is yes, you're blunting the glucose bump up, but you're keeping it high for longer. You're keeping it high for longer, right? So instead of it going up to 150, when you add fat, well, let's just say, say it goes to 150, and then it comes back down within, let's just say 90 minutes. Now it goes to 130, but now it takes 120 minutes to come back down to normal. So it's not like this magic thing. That's what we're, when we talk about like time under the curve, that's what we're talking about. Like how long does it take to get back to normal? So the, the, the key here, guys, is that portion control still matters. But these are tricks to not overly spike your blood glucose and to try to get it back to normal as, as fast as possible still has to do with managing how much you're eating. So to, just to go back real quick, um, you know, in terms of blood pressure, and, and I'll kind of, this will wrap into our next tip. Understanding these things is really important. Understanding how important it is to accurately know your blood glucose is critical. But just like when I talk about blood pressure in my previous videos, I, I say the elephant in the room is how much do you weigh? If you're a bigger body, your, your blood, your body knows to pump more pressure. It's got to get to the periphery. It's a larger volume of mass here. So of course it's going to raise blood pressure. But then what do we do? We treat it, right? And then we, we literally hamper the blood flow to everything because, you know, we're saying, well, there's too much pressure here. Well, that's, that's a very debatable way to treat blood pressure. The, the best way to treat it is to simply lose weight. But the other big thing with blood pressure is dehydration. And it's the same thing for blood glucose. So our next tip is hydration. If you're dehydrated, what does that do to your blood glucose in your body? Is it any higher? No, it's just more concentrated. So that's, that's the problem. What is your body mostly? It's water. So by staying hydrated between meals. So many of you are hearing this for the first time. I, I say so many things, guys, over the years, so many times. Let me say it extremely clearly. Stop drinking all of your water with your meals. What does water do to your stomach acid? It dilutes it. Is that good or bad for digestion? That's bad. I'm not saying have zero water, but keep it to about six to eight ounces and no more than that and drink it slowly. Get your hydration between meals. That is the Cliff Notes version of that message. But making sure that you're hydrated is super critical to not only your blood pressure, but your blood glucose, okay? Keeping it to uh, under 10 minutes. Have a good rest of the day, guys.